James Dean Bradfield from Manic Street Preachers. Good to have you here. Howdy, how you doing? New album, brand new album, Resistance is Futile out on the 13th of April. What is the best bit about having a new album out and the worst bit about having a new album out? I think the best bit uh, is the kind of little private moment you have when uh, you've gone through the writing of the record, the demoing, the chucking away of bad songs, um, the tense pressure, the arguments you have, but then you finally finish the record and then you go and master it and then you drive away and you have the first mastered version of the album. Yeah. And you drive away and just listen to it for the first time in sequence for all the right gaps and it's sounding as it should. That for me is always the best moment. And is there a format that you normally listen to the kind of first cut of the album? Is it in a car or where, where do you oh, take it to hear it? Old school baby, CD car. Yeah. CD. CD, a very underrated format. <laughs> <laughs> God bless him. God bless him. Disappearing yeah. quickly. And it, was this an album that you, you thought at some point might never get made? Or you no, always thought it was going to be made? No, no, not really. I mean, kind of, we had to jump through a couple of hoops to make it. Uh, uh, we lost our studio in Faster Studios in Cardiff uh, because um, there was regeneration and you know, uh, the, 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 the land that we leased the building, which our studio was in, uh, was going to be knocked down flat. So, you know, we had to mothball the studio. And bringing down a studio takes about two months. Especially it must be quite old. painful to it do. It was, it was. I must say, it was quite painful. I, I nearly shed a tear when I, <laughs> when I locked the door for the last time. Um, you didn't and go and watch it being pulled down, did you, with a, I went a back tear and a high-vis vest? I went, back, I went back every week and had a look at it. I did. did you? Yeah, I did, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. Um, and then kind of like um, to find another place and then do it up as a studio took a year. So there was, we did have to kind of like overcome some ob obstacles to make it. But there was never any point where, there was never any point where I thought the album's not going to get made. No. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, every band has kind of busy times and down times and stuff like that. So with the, with the Manic Street Preachers, when you're in a bit of down time, what, do you have like a WhatsApp group? How do you guys communicate? Do you uh, Skype in, meet uh, up? I'm not, uh, it's not a badge of honour, but I, I really, really do not have a digital footprint. I don't have a digital fingerprint. I don't have a digital kind of like, you know, anything. You're off grid, James. I'm off saying? grid. I am very much off grid. Um, I tried this. I tried to do a digital detox and ended up falling off the wagon and going back to a phone. No worries. No worries. Have you just... got no phone? You got um, a landline. Did, you, you, landline. you got me there. You got me there. I have got one of those pieces of. Yeah, 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 I've got that, I've got that. Um, I kind of like I walk my dog, uh, go walking in the Breckens, yeah. uh, just like, you know, go and see my rugby club, Cardiff Blues, pop my head in at the cricket in the summer now and again, uh, spend time with the kids, normal stuff. So if your rugby team lose then, you don't get a load of stick from your mates because you're, you're off grid, they can't take the mickey out of you on text. No, or but, no like but the thing is, I do this thing, I go and interact with real people, and some of them may not be Cardiff Blues fans, yeah. and they just give me lots of <laughs> then. <laughs> You mentioned a couple of things in the session, just quickly want to pick up on. Um, Nicky, obviously, artistic director in terms of what he picks for you guys to wear. <laughs> no, Tell us a little bit about over, that. I was over-egging it a bit. Um, no, I mean, kind of like, a, you know, at the start of the band, you know, you had Nick on the left and Richie on the right. Yeah. Obviously, subsequently, you know, with Richie's appearance, disappearance, etc. Um, there was just, you know, myself and Nick front of the stage and Sean behind. It was always cool in the day when uh, Richie and Nick were like the flying wingers on each side. Yep. And, uh, and you had the utilitarian ditch digger in the middle, which is me, <laughs> kind of thing. But I think I'm going to have to raise my game, basically. So we shall see what happens. And so on tour, I mean, what an amazing, on tour with Guns N' Roses. We supported them three times, I think, in Europe. Because yep. um, I, mean, I read that you learned their songs, Appetite for Destruction. I learned the old album, yeah, I learned the old album. I've forgotten some, how to play some of it now. But uh, I even knew it, you know, how to play the, you know, uh, kind of, uh, kind of, you know, the album tracks like Anything Goes and My Michelle. Oh, Mr. But, like, Brownstone. You know, Mr. Brownstone. Do, 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 I know that. Really. Off by heart. Yeah. Little, 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 little now. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Um, kind of like, you know, I'm pretty much, if I do a, a bit of a brush up on all the album tracks, you know, in the next two weeks or so, I'll be back up to speed again. That's it wasn't a massive part of my guitar education. Just gigantic, actually. Last question. Uh, one of the most amazing things about the session you've just done for us is just how in love with you guys your fans are they're, they're amazing people like proper fanatics aren't they they're brilliant yeah i mean can i have we have a proper relationship with them because um when perhaps we've done an album which they think is under par they really let us know it <laughs> and they're quite, quite fierce about they're it quite honest with you yeah, yeah in the past they kind of you know some some of the fans you know uh regard themselves as keepers of the flame and I, and I, I kind of like people that this, that, that scrutiny that some of the fans give us, that harsh scrutiny, scrutiny. and sometimes they, they do just give us just, just absolutely just like a, a ticker tape parade of love, you know. Yeah. It's a proper relationship. Um, we don't go out of a way to, to be too touchy-feely about it, but we know it's there and we know it judges us and, and we know that we can depend on it in the good times too. So it's, it's, it is cool. It's, it's always been there. Well, definitely, you could definitely see that today. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming to Absolute Radio. James Dean Bradfield. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, sir.